Can you see my slides? Yep. Yep, looks good. Please go ahead. Okay, so I will talk about uh, rivet analysis in heavy ion physics. Um, so uh, just a brief outline. I'll start talking uh, about what's rivet and the relationship with uh, of rivet with analysis preservation. Uh, then I will show some recent developments in rivet for heavy ions. Um, in special what rivet uh, can do at the moment. And then I will show a, a brief uh, demonstration of how uh, to use rivet. Okay, um, starting uh, about rivet. Rivet stands for uh, robust independent validation of experimenting theory. Uh, this is a framework, uh, this is uh, C++, so it's a language very friendly for us. Um, and it's a framework that uh, aims to uh, facilitate the comparison between uh, theory and data. Uh, Rivet has some um, features that uh, help us with that. Uh, for example, when you create a Rivet analysis uh, using a specific pattern, uh, I, I will talk uh, a bit more about this pattern uh, later, but uh, it will download uh, the data directly from HEP data so that uh, it will facilitate uh, to have the data points and also uh, the binning uh, for uh, your histograms. Um, and it's uh, relatively easy to use. Rivet has been used um, a lot uh, with um, summer students, for example. Um, so I, I can guarantee that the implementation is uh, very simple. Uh, so um, Rivet at this moment uh, will give you uh, tools to uh, reproduce results um, with heavy flavor, jets, particle spectra. It can create ratios, not only uh, particle ratios, but also RAAs, um, RCPs, uh, any kind of ratio you need. And there will be tools to facilitate that. So uh, the workflow uh, basically uh, Rivet will work um, with any Monte Carlo event generator uh, that can create output in HEPMC format. Uh, this, of course, includes Jetscape, but many others like Pizza, uh, Smash, uh, Angantyr, Hygiene, etc. So uh, you produce this output in uh, using HEPMC framework. And also you get the data from uh, HEP data, and this is combined uh, in Rivet, uh, where you have uh, some kind of analysis repository. I'll talk more about that. Um, but then uh, you have all the, the, the tools you need for the uh, MEC to data comparison. Uh, about analysis preservation, uh, Rivet can contribute with that. Uh, we know that the details related to uh, the methods and uh, selections uh, in the analysis, um, they not always are very well described in the article. Um, in a few cases, even um, not well described in internal analysis notes. And recover all the tiny details um, together with, uh, with the collaboration that made the measurement can be very uh, time consuming and for older uh, experience, maybe not even possible. Uh, for people outside experiments, uh, maybe it's not very clear how some observables and simulators are defined. Uh, for example, multiplicity in uh, PP or uh, PA collisions or centrality in, in heavy ion collisions or uh, the definition of primary particles that uh, each uh, experiment will have one. And depending on the experiment, um, this definition changes in time. Uh, so not, not always uh, trivial to determine uh, what's the definition of primary particles. Uh, it's also uh, convenient for theoreticians uh, interested in testing models because uh, the knowledge uh, of the experimental methods and also the, the definitions of uh, observables in simulations um, it's, it's not required that you know how to calculate that because uh, in Rivet, you're going to have uh, the analysis written. And, and this is usually um, 
made by the experiment that made the measurement. So it's more guaranteed that you can uh, reproduce the methods that were used. Um, so I will now show some uh, recent developments uh, in rivet in special for heavy ions, but not only. Um, for example, uh, rivet contains the Alice uh, definition of primary particles. Uh, here in this link, you can read about the, the definition. Uh, but there is a specific projection, um, Alice primary particles, that will give you uh, the, the particles that Alice considers uh, primary particles. Uh, of course, it would be great if uh, we had for each experiment. Uh, this, this is not a reality at this moment. But uh, this is uh, something that uh, I believe will be available in Rivet um, at some point. But for at least this definition is already there. Uh, also, uh, estimators, uh, for example, uh, again in Alice, um, you can have uh, four uh, estimators in forward rapidity or mid rapidity for multiplicity and centrality. So uh, at this moment, you have. Um, estimators with charged particle multiplicity in the acceptance of the V0, which is a forward uh, detector. Uh, you have something similar for um, P, uh, P lead. Uh, and also for uh, lead lead, you have uh, the whole uh, process of um, determining the, the centrality. Uh, as a more detailed um, example, uh, in this figure on the left, this is the uh, distribution of the V0 amplitude that it's used in a list to determine the, the centrality. Uh, and on the right, uh, the black points, uh, they are the, the V0 amplitude. And the red points, they are the charted particle multiplicity, uh, which is used uh, by rivet to determine the centrality. Uh, there is a relationship between both, that it's a, a linear relationship. So uh, this, uh, the user of the charged particle multiplicity, in this case, it's possible to determine the centrality in an analogous way that the experiment does. Uh, so a, a calibration file uh, has to be produced. This calibration file for the centrality uh, depends on event generator, uh, energy, and the kind of beam that you have. So you, you have to run this, uh, this calibration. It will create a distribution similar to the one uh, it's being shown here in the figure uh, on the right. Um, and it will contain uh, the particularities uh, of the experiment for that determination. For example, in Alice, we use the number of charged particles uh, in a certain uh, acceptance of the V0A and V0C. So this is all coded. Uh, you don't need to think too much about that. It's all there. You just run the, the analysis and you create the, uh, the calibration file. Uh, so once you have this calibration file, you give to Rivet as a preload, and then you run your analysis and the centrality will be calculated based on this calibration file. Uh, here in the figure, for example, it's the PT differential uh, yields for uh, pi on plus in the centrality zero uh, to 5%. So the centrality uh, is calculated, as I say, in an like, analogous way that it's done in the experiment. Uh, it's a simple imp implementation. Uh, no previous knowledge of uh, the whole details of the uh, experimental methods necessary, but also it's not a black box. The code is there. You can uh, easily check what are the, the acceptance, what kind of particles are, are there. Uh, you, you can have a look at all of this. Um, okay, so not only uh, Alice can, um, uh, we, we don't need to use only Alice, uh, it's possible to determine centrality uh, for star and phoenix and um, Rick experiments. Um, so uh, these projections for the, the calibration of the centrality used. Uh, analogous uh, methods used in starting in Phoenix. And here I show some examples. On the left, it's the REA of charged pions for gold gold 200 GeV in the 0 to 12% uh, centrality class. The black points is the data that was taken directly from HEP data. 
and the red points, uh, they are um, peak angle that was uh, used in this case, but as I said, you can use any uh, event generator with the FMC output. Uh, on the right, uh, it's um, the ratio of the RAA for um, charged particles as a function of PT uh, in gold gold 200 over gold gold uh, 100 third in the 0 to 5% centrality. For Phoenix, uh, it's also possible. We have the definition. Uh, for the uh, for the Phoenix uh, centrality. So here on the left, it's the RAA of pi zeros in gold gold 39 uh, GV in the 10 to 12, 10 to 20% centrality class. Again, black points, they are the data from half data and red points is peak angle two. And on the right, uh, it's the same thing, but for gold, gold 62.4 in the centrality class, 0 to 10%. Um, now I would like to show how, how to use Revit. Uh, in principle, uh, you start uh, creating a template analysis. Uh, you can do this with the command uh, Revit make analysis. And then there is, as I said, a pattern that you can use, which is uh, in capital letters, the name of the experiment, uh, underscore the year of publication, underscore I, and this inspired number. Um, and so in this de demonstration, I will uh, use uh, this uh, Alice analysis. So now um, let me just um, do this and share my screen. I think you can see my desktop now, right? Okay, so um, here uh, at this moment, I have only two folders and uh, a file, which is at the HEPMC uh, output. Um, so um, what I want to do here is use Revit uh, make analysis and it will create uh, a template analysis and it will extract the data from happy data. Okay, I have now uh, four files with the name of my analysis. There's a .cc file, which is, will contain the code. Uh, there's an info file that will contain uh, information about the, the paper. Um, a dot .plot file that will uh, contain information to make the, the plots nicer. Uh, you can include the uh, access labels and other things. And this file is uh, the file that contains the data that was uh, downloaded from half data. Okay, um, now if we open this file, uh, the .cc file, as I said, this is a template uh, that Rivet creates. Uh, so for this example, what I'm going to do is to remove most of this code. I will just leave one histogram. This is our histogram. Uh, this is our particles. So this is final state particles. Um, so th this area um, is, here in init is where you're going to declare things like particles, histograms. Um, in analyze is where you run most of your code, like um, particle loops. And the last part is finalize, where you're going to scale your histograms. Um, okay, in order not to get too delayed, I will just, um, and this is all in, in the slides. Um, I will just um, make some comments. I will get the code that I have already prepared and make some comments here. Um, okay, as I said, this object is our final state particles. I include some uh, selections uh, that are described in the paper. For example, uh, I want uh, my particles to be within absolute rapidity smaller than 0.5. Uh, I want only charged particles. And in this specific 
case, I will select only chartered pions. So I include the, uh, the PID uh, 211, which are pions. Uh, I need to declare this, um, this object. So I use declare and I pass the object and I associate a string that will be used later in analyze. Um, this book uh, function, it will um, declare histograms. So here, this map is declared here below. We have a map which is associated a strings and a 1D histogram. My uh, distribution of uh, charge pi on uh, transverse momentum. And uh, this code 111, it's because this is the, the first table uh, from the HEP data. If you look at HEP data, you have uh, the tables. And so uh, this one means table one. This is um, X axis one. And the third one is Y axis one. And the last thing in init is to declare a counter because I want to count the number of events uh, that will be used to normalize my histogram later. Um, okay, in analyze, as I said, uh, it will contain um, most of the analysis, in particular particle loops. So here I include, um, again, the final state object. Um, to get this, I use apply projection. I use the event because this will take the particles for each event. And then I associate the string that I declared for the final state particles. Uh, then I get um, this object particles. This is basically a vector containing uh, all the particles um, that obey the selection that I, I, I used in, in it. And I, I get the object for final state and call particles. It will give me the particles. Uh, then I fill my counter. So uh, in each event, this analyze will be called for each event. So each event, my counter will uh, add one. So you don't need to pass any argument. It will add one to the counter. And then finally, the particle loop. As I said, this uh, object particles uh, it's a vector, so you can loop over uh, the particles inside this vector. And you call, you use your histogram and call fill. Um, you get the, your particle and call the function pt, and you divide by this um, global uh, constant that will normalize uh, 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 accordingly so that you have the pt in GV over C. At the end, we finalize, we just normalize our histogram. So you have here the histogram with the uh, PT distribution of charged pions. Um, so you scale uh, using scale W and you pass one over uh, the total um, sum of weights inside your, your counter. And, and that's it. Uh, if we go uh, to the terminal, now we want to compile our analysis. Uh, the way we do, as I said, uh, what I did is all showed here in the, in the slides. Um, after I have the code, I want to uh, compile. So uh, the way it's done, it's with rivet, this command rivet build, um, uh, following with the, the, the compiled, uh, name. Uh, so th this is a standard. You pass like rivet and the name of your analysis.so and at the end uh, the name of your .cc. Uh, this will compile quickly. Yes. And to run rivet, um, we use the command rivet. Um, this flag is to say that um, you should look for analysis in the folder that you currently are. And then minus um, A, and then you pass the name of your analysis. Uh, dash O, you select the name of your, your output. And the last argument is your HEPMC file. So 
if I run this. Um, okay, uh, I have to change this to the name of the file I have in my, my folder. Okay, this is running, it will take uh, more or less one minute. So while it runs, let me um, tell you about uh, how to make the plots. We use this command rivet make HTML. Antonio, you have five minutes. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, uh, dash dash PWD so that we will look at the folder you are and you give the, the output of your rivet run. So when you use this, Um, just a few seconds. Okay, maybe we don't need to wait because I ran this before. Um, the results will of uh, rivet make HTML will create this folder rivet plots. If you access rivet plots, you're going to have an HTML file. If you open this, uh, some information about the paper will automatically come uh, in the HTML file. And if you click here, it will show uh, the plot. So this is the um, Charlie Pion PT distribution. Uh, this is only uh, the number of events, or uh, as in rivet, we call the sum of weights. Um, and that's it. If you edit the .plot file, you can insert your um, access labels and you can change uh, your, uh, the points of your simulation through the, here in these red lines. Um, you can edit the, the way you want. So um, that's basically it, how, how to, to run it. Um, if you uh, need to implement um, analysis uh, in heavy ion, you for sure, um, or at least most of cases, you want to determine the centrality. Uh, to do this, um, three lines are necessary. In init, you um, use declare centrality, and for Alice, uh, you pass exactly this, um, uh, these arguments. And in analyze, you get the centrality projection, a very similar way that we took for uh, the, the projection for the final state. You pass the event and the string associated uh, with your centrality. And then you use uh, this um, sent proj and you get, um, you give you the centrality for that event. And then you can um, maybe fill your uh, histograms accordingly. And as I said um, before, uh, we need a calibration file. So when you run your analysis using the rivet command, uh, you have to add dash p and the calibration file that you created. This calibration file is created by a plugin inside rivet that you just run and create this calibration. And after the name of your analysis, you have to pass um, a flag. So colon sent equal gen. Uh, it means that we use the calibration file. Um, uh, it will uh, determine the centrality based on the calibration file that you pass. Um, there are other um, strategies. In, instead of using the particle distribution, you can use, for example, the impact parameter distribution. Or uh, if you're using HEPMC3, uh, you can just directly um, use the centrality information that is stored uh, in the HEPMC3. Uh, and as I said, this calibration file um, also depends on model, beam, and, and energy. Okay, my summary, um, Rivet, it works as an experimental analysis for MEC uh, repository. Um, HEP data uh, uh, is a repository for the data and Rivet can download the data directly from there. And HEP MEC, uh, it's a framework uh, that works as an interface between the DMC and the analysis. So this uh, provides data and analysis preservation and also needs comparison of data in theory. So um, some advantages are that the, the recipe uh, are, are given uh, by experiments. 
So the standard procedure is that the experiment produce the rivet analysis and make it available in rivet. Um, so this gives the maximum uh, fidelity to methods used in the experiment. And also uh, other models can be compared using the very same code. Um, so where to find here, it's a link where you can download Rivet. Um, there is the uh, official Rivet support. Um, uh, you can um, also send me um, uh, questions or if you need help, I can of course help. Uh, I'm, I'm not a Rivet developer, but I've been, I'm very familiar with Rivet. So that's what I have for today. Okay, thanks, Antonio. Um, are there any questions? All right, um, I don't see any hands this time. Um, maybe I can ask one more question and, and um, uh, I can see where uh, if people have others. Um, I had a question about the centrality calibration. Mm -hmm. so, so how exactly does this work in the sense that, I mean, it's, it's calculating centrality from the Monte Carlo events. And is it just binning the events according to some, uh, the same uh, definition that's applied in the experiment? Or it's, um, it's computing the cumulative distribution of those variables and then determining quantiles? Yeah, basically, uh, for example, um, if you're able to produce minimum bias in, in heavy ion, uh, you can create this distribution of, um, of um, charge particle multiplicity, um, and then Rivet will um, get this and determine percentiles. So it will associate the, uh, the most central events to the higher multiplicity events. Okay, but like the most central zero to five percent of events, are those um, defined by the data distribution and the shape of the data distribution? Or are they defined, you know, that's in the calibration file, or are they defined in the Monte Carlo event generator and whatever shape that distribution has, and then it takes the top five percent of that? Yes, it's the based on the Monte Carlo uh, distribution, okay. not on data. Okay, cool. Thanks. All right. Uh, I don't see any other questions or comments, so uh, that was that was very clear and, and useful for me, at least. I hope it was useful for, for everyone else. Um, yeah. So so thanks a lot. Um, if we don't have any other questions, last chance, uh, then I think we can go ahead and and uh, and end the session here and start this last uh, closing session.